It is with great sorrow that I say goodbye to the most loving and caring lady I have ever known, my grandmother, Wilhelmina Thompson. You will always be in my heart. You were a wonderful grandmother with great strength and depth. You were my hero, my legend. You were always there for me whenever I needed you. You've been a great source of inspiration for me, and you have taught me a lot of things that I will always remember. And those are the things that have taken me through the path of darkness to the path of light. I remember the days when we used to go to Carnation Market to sell. It was so much fun. It was you that I saw and I built my strength. There are so many times when I feel like I'm weak and I feel like I can no longer continue this journey. Because of your strength, because of everything you have instilled in me, I keep going. You are the person I envision. You are the person I remember. You are the person that keeps me going when I feel like I am up against a wall. Mama, you have so much strength. You have indoctrinated so many good things in me. You have taught me that the race is not for the swift, not the battle for the strong, but for he who can endure to the end. There is none like you. Mama, I love you so much. I've always loved you. I've always praised you. You are my strength. You are the wind beneath my wings. Mama, rest in peace. You'll always live on in my heart. Sleep well, Mama. Mama, I love you. Your great-granddaughter, Charmaine.
good day everyone. I will be giving a tribute uh, for Momo on behalf of the offsprings on the side of Hortense Gardner. I'll be talking a little bit about who Momo was. The best words I could use to describe Momo were loving and God-fearing. Momo was a woman whose love knew no bounds. Her love did not just extend to her immediate family, but to the extended family and community. No one could come to the house of Mama hungry and she would not find every way to bring them food. Like in the Bible when they had shared the five loaves and two fish amongst the thousands, Mama would find a way to share the one bun and two cheese amongst the hundreds. Mama was someone you could talk to about anything. You could tell her any of your problems and she was there to listen, to guide, and was always willing to help, no matter who you were. An example of this <laughs> was when my father was talking to Mama jokingly and said to Mama, she felt as though Mrs. Latibodier was giving her too much trouble. And Mama said, Mr. Jeff, come with me. I'm going to find you a wife who's going to take care of you. And as far as we knew, she was very serious. Mama was one who took the Bible so seriously. As the Lord said, love as I do, Mama did just that. And Mama loved the Lord like no one else. Mama was someone who prayed like no one else. Mama spent her entire life praying. I wouldn't be surprised if as she came from the womb, her first words would have been, thank you, Lord, I am alive. Mama spent countless hours praying. Even when she was coming to the point where she was preparing to leave to be with our Lord, she was praying. She prayed like no one else. Honestly, if we could pray a lot more like her and love like Mama, the world would be a wonderful place. We were able to have an opportunity to help care for Mama, which was amazing for all of us because mama was a woman who left such an impact in our lives i can say our lives are much better having known mama i am sure mama had also left an impact in the hearts of all those around her be it her family her community of chateau district and her country Mama, I can definitely say on behalf of your offspring, you will be dearly missed and we look forward to seeing you again in the Lord's heavenly kingdom. I found a poem which I believe best represents Mama. A poem by Crystal Foy. There it goes like this. There is a woman who always keeps her head up high. Her eyes sparkle like a bright star in the sky. She has the stamina, beauty and courage that one would admire, even the love and happiness that one could inspire. She is a woman that one can always count on and a woman with love who can see no wrong. Her beauty shines from the inside out. It flows like a journey down a long route. Her smile shines beautifully over the horizon like the sun and her intelligence, wisdom and hardworking are anything but surprising. She goes the extra mile to help one in need or one with a broken heart. And throughout all her hard work, no one ever sees her fall apart. Mama, we truly miss you and may your soul forever rest in peace. Willem Thompson, affectionately known as Mama. I've shared so many memorable moments with mama if you know me or you've ever been to the house when i was smaller i was always there always going to shop to ensure that you know i buy mama milk because nobody makes a good milk tea like mama extra sweet <laughs> uh oxtail was one of her all-time favorites before she stopped eating it so we'd usually go by miss june or miss june to get her oxtail and best believe I'm going to secure my $20. And if you know, $20 back then was a whole heap of money. Mama was always the one to rescue me whenever I wanted to get away from a good beating from my parents. She either called me over there and best believe they can't come over there. 
They can't come for me. Or she always finds somewhere for me to sleep, even in her room, just to ensure that that was good. As I mentioned, ensure, everybody know, once you're coming from foreign, you're going to bring mama some ensure. And when mama get that ensure, and you tell her, mama, drink the ensure for yourself. Might as well you did tell her if you give it to everybody, because mama got to tell you, get a cup, and she's going to give you some. And that's one of the principles that she has instilled in me, and many others who have you know, been in contact with her. Mama promoted kindness and love. She was very selfless, so she would give you a loss and do it out. Uh, I am a testament of that, because in grade six, when things got really bad, Mama was always there for me, sending me to school. She just wanted me to do the best. Um, she implored me to get baptized, and she just always wanted me to read the Bible and to just do things that are right. And for that, I'm really grateful. I know a century is a lot for somebody to live for over a hundred years. That, that's a milestone and a blessing. But mama, I think it was just not enough for me. I wasn't able to show you what I've accomplished and I wasn't able to give back to you. But mama, you are erring your own right. I know you're gone, that is inevitable, but I'll cherish the memories that we've had and the experiences and the long-lasting life lessons that you've taught me. Until we meet again, not love, Mama. To Mama T.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Marjorie Paul, and I am sending condolence to the Thompson's family on behalf of the Lennox family. I'm rest and sleep and take care, rest, Mama. And now sing this little song for the family. I know your life on hurt was troubled. Only you could know the pain. You weren't afraid to face the devil. You were no stranger to the rain. Go rest on, on that mountain. Cause your work on earth is done. Go to heaven and a shouting love for the Father and the Son. Oh, how we cried the day you left us. And gather round your grave to grieve. Wish I could see the angels' faces when they hear. I join my family and friends in saying our final goodbye to you, Mama. With tears in my eyes, Mother, I miss you so much. We say goodbye to you today, but you will always in my heart. Mama, I thank you for being a great inspiration, not only to your family, but also to others. You touch so many lives with love, kindness, and wisdom. The world is a better place because of you. Thank you, Mama, for sharing your life with us. For 103 years, we love you, adore you, respect you, and miss you, Mother. Rest in peace. Tribute to Mama Thompson. Who can find a virtuous woman for her praise is above rubies. Mama was the epitome of a virtuous woman and as defined, it speaks volume to her character. She was one who leads her home with integrity, discipline, and love. There were no shortcomings as it relates to teaching her children to love, to be humble, and to serve God. This principle has been extended to the generations. A woman whose character exemplifies selflessness, which reminds me of the scripture that says, as everyone purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or out of compulsion, for God loveth a cheerful giver. I am sure everyone in the hearing of these words will agree that Mama's kind, kindness knows no bounds as she was a cheerful giver. Her caring soul exceeded all expectations as she never ceased to go above and beyond to ensure others' needs are met even when it seemed impossible. I can remember she started a small snack shop and of course the business could not thrive because mama would give each passing child a candy or a bag of chips or whatever it is that she's selling. This woman with a heart of gold who would welcome, would welcome anyone with open arms without discrimination. My dad would always tell us stories about how mama treated him like his own when he was a young child, 
always extending her kindness. She became one of my mom's best friend and hence my sisters and I are elated that we have become her bonus grandchildren. Oh, how mama's heart ached when mom and dad passed. She would ask Paula to call just to console me and oh, how I appreciated her comforting words. Today, I, I must say I'm elated to be inducted in this family and with a bond that cannot be broken. Oh, how my heart ached to know I won't hear her voice echoing in my ear gently and comforting, full of love. Mama, I loved you then and I love you still. Continue to sleep in peace until we meet again. Good evening, everyone. I am here this evening with great honor and respect towards Mama. Mama, Mother Thompson, Miss T, no, Mother T, Aunt Willel. She is known to us as Aunt Willel. As a child growing up amongst Mama, it was wonderful. Mama is always the type of person that cares for everyone. Whenever we were young, and we have a, a father that beat us dreadfully, and I can't always remember when daddy's beating us, 
And once we get away, we are going to head for mama. So we always run to find mama. Mama was always there to shelter us. And as long as you're here, we reach to her. She's going to find out what happened to you. Why you are crying? You go to her and you're in temper. You're in rage, so you can't even speak. But she's going to ask you and ask you again. What do you? So you're going to ease up now to tell her what wrong. You, and as long as you said to her, Daddy beat me. If she was doing something, you see, she would ease it aside. And she would say, come on, take a, put on her shoes. And she's ready. And if you wasn't going with her at the same time, she was going to take you by your hand and take you home. And then she, when she reached the gate, she's going to call out to our father. Dada, dada, make her tell you something, you know. <clears throat> you see them dead left picking here? That, make her tell you something, you know. Not, not, not disadvantage them. That's how mama would go. I can remember once my father, not again, sent me to her to deliver a message to her. When I, I reach up, up the yard and I never see her, I see Brother Hobie. Many of you don't know Brother Hobie. And I, I said, good evening, Brother Hobie. Where's mama? And he said to me, she down the kitchen. So I run to her at the kitchen. And before I could say good evening to her, she she would look at me and say, Sadie, Lord God, me just put the last piece of food in my mouth. You see, she would look to the side and she look at me. And she, she said, come here. And when I go up to her, she reach into her mouth and she would take out a piece and push it in my mouth. That thing stay with me for life. It's like it was a great kindness that she has done to me. So I keep it with me all the time up until now. So I, I look at it with a great honor. It, it was always, it means so much to me. So I keep it with me through life. And that is why I always be around her and try to be kind to her and have a heart for her. Because that one little act of kindness, was it, it was more than what I can find words to speak about it now. But I look at it and I always keep it with me, as I say, as a great kindness. I remember our next time, Mas Ab that died and gone. Mas Ab said to me one day he went to his, um, with his parents to the bush. So when they get home, Mas Ab tired and hungry and the parents take him and send him to shop. And while him coming down him the road, running to shop, hold up him trousers, him say, mother, she sit down in her, her, her little shop. She used to run a little business out the front. And she look at him over the road and said, come here, boy. And him run to her and she said, hold your hand. And him, him hold your hand. She said, hold your two hand. And him hold him two hand and she full it with rice and peas. <laughs> Delicious. Yes, it was so delicious to him that he, he look at it and he eat it. And it, it's like it full him. He give him strength so he just pull up him towards his side and he run down to the shop to get what the parents send him for. And you know these little things we share about mama. And so many, many more that we don't have everything right and on to speak. Mama is a blessed person in the family. She was a veteran for each and every one of us. So we will always remember Mama as with a great, great personality, with a kindness, with so much that is unspeakable. But Mama will always stay in our heart. She will be greatly missed by many of us. Mama love our grandchildren them with a passion, without anything. She she love them, she care for them, she grow them up, she nurture them, she does so much for them. And I, I know that 
they acknowledge her just the same. Mama is my grandmother's um, niece. Mama mother, um, my mother, my mother, mother, they are two sisters. So my mother and mama is two first cousins. So you can know where I'm coming from in this family. So it is a pleasure to speak something about mama this evening. So I just leave you with that until more time. Thank you. Precious Lord,
play Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you. 
play Oceans. Play just as I am. Just as I am without one plea.
Yeah. 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you for your patience as we have waited for the commencement of this program this afternoon. At this time, I invite you to stand with us for the opening sentences as we celebrate the life of Sister Wilhelmina Thompson. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He who keeps he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade at my right hand. The sun shall not strike me by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. This afternoon, Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we have come together to celebrate a life that was well lived. A life that was not only in quantity, but in quality. And so as we remember Sister Thompson, and as we seek to perpetuate her legacy let us do so with the joy of the lord in our hearts and with the blessed hope that we will see her again in the sweet by and by let me just remind you that all protocols are still in place we have one of our leaders here honorable pernell charles jr mp we are happy to have you, sir, and your entourage. And so we want to let you know the Seventh-day Adventist Church keeps the protocols. All right, so we are advising you, try your best to keep your masks on for your own safety as we go through the program. We're going to go to our opening hymn at this time. It's printed in your program, The Great Physician. Thank you. 
this time I now invite you to bow your heads with me while we pray. Gracious, eternal, heavenly Father, our God, indeed we are thankful, Lord, be able where you have kept us. As we go through this Thanksgiving service of your daughter, who you have lent to us, we want to thank you for what she would have accomplished, the examples she would have set for us. We ask now, Heavenly Father, that you will be with the family members as they mourn. Continue to comfort them. We pray, Lord, that they will find peace in spite of the situation. Be with this program as we look and say thanks to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. All right, let me just say quickly, we're just asking persons just to keep your phones on silent or vibrate so that we don't disrupt the service. And also just want to inform you that the female restroom is just to my left at the back on this building. The one by itself further back is the male restroom, all right? So at this time, we will now have a musical selection. This will be done by Brittany Art. John saw a city that could not be hidden. John saw the city, oh yes he did. John caught a glimpse of the golden throne. Tell me all about it. Go right on around the throne. He saw the sea, there's got to be more. What will it be? I want to go to that city he saw, New Jerusalem. Jerusalem. I want to walk your streets that are golden. And I want to run where the angels have tried. Jerusalem, I want to rest 
Let's give her a bigger amen. Amen? In that city, city of God. Thank you very much. All right, so we, we have made a few changes to the program. So at this time, we will have Member of Parliament, Colonel Charles Jr., to do his tribute at this time. After which, we will have the first scripture reading, which is taken from Psalms 108, verse 1 to 8. Mrs. Lydia Clark, Williston, granddaughter. Pastor Houghton, elders, church officers, congregants, family members, let me say good morning to everyone. Sorry. So you got good training from Mama Thompson. Yes. Again, good morning to everyone. Well, afternoon. I was here from morning. I made sure to come early because I have a, a few funerals today. But you know, I'm glad I came here early. Uh, let me again acknowledge the family. Let me acknowledge my counselor who I see. Uh, this is Carlin Benjamin. I'm going to tell you, I think that Mama Thompson will be so proud of you. Family members, I to say to you on her behalf that she's proud of you. You not only look beautiful, but I must tell you, sitting down there and getting the opportunity to see your interaction with her really shows respect the love i can see in your tears of joy in your smiles i can see that if we even had her i don't know if it's her son or godson plotting her here no that is love so it is clear to me that she has made an awesome impact on her family and community and i want to just say to you sincere condolences on behalf of the entire constituency. This is among the first funerals that I've been able to visit in two years. Because of the pandemic, we have, well, I have been barred. And so I am blessed to say that I am able to join in the celebration of a life well lived. 103 is no easy batting. That's not easy. And I must tell you, even more special, Miss Wilhelmina Thompson and myself share the same birthday, September 25th. And so I know she's a special woman. But um, to be quickly, to be quick, let me just say, Family members, community members, we have a responsibility. Not only to come and to share and to celebrate the life, but to make sure that as we walk out the door, our life is changed. If you are here celebrating the life of Mama Thompson and you don't leave with an understanding that you are to live differently when you walk out of these doors, then I'm not sure she'd be pleased. She wants us all, including me, to take from her example, to refresh ourselves with the good and reset our own opportunity. By all accounts, she was a teacher, a giver, 
a mother, a nurturer, a protector. And the question that I'm sure we must ask ourselves is what are we doing with our borrowed time? Because we are only here for a fleeting moment. Any of us who believe that we're so big and bad that we're going to live forever, you're not reading the Bible. So, Pastor, I'm going to leave the preaching to you this Sunday and just end by saying again to the family and to the community and to the friends, on behalf of all of us, cry tears of joy. Nothing is wrong with that. But remember, reflect in your life the good that she would want you to represent. Make sure that this celebration of this beautiful soul means something to you that changes how you live. It's going to do that for me. One love. This is Lydia Clark Willis' son. Psalms 108. I read from verse 1 to verse 8. O oh God, my heart is fixed. I sing and give praise even with my glory. Awake, Palestine, and Arp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great above the heavens, and thy truth reacheth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above the earth that thy beloved may be delivered, save with thy right hand, and answered me. God has spoken in holiness. I will rejoice, I will devise Shechem, and made out the valley of Sukkot. Gilgag is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim also is the strength of my head, Judah, is my lawgiver. Amen. All right, we have a reading section on the program. We will be collecting an offering in need of church building. All right, let us pray. Gracious Father and our God, we are grateful for your many blessings towards us. Now, Father, as we are about to collect an offering, we pray, Lord, that it will be used to the furtherance of your work and the building of your temple. We pray that you will be with the rest of the proceeding of this service. In your son's special name, we pray until your time. Amen. Right, we'll be singing from the, the program, the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Amen. At this time, we will now invite Jeffrey Latibodier, great grandson. He'll be doing the, the second scripture reading, followed by a musical selection, Miss Brittany Hart and great grandchildren. Goodness of God. Bethel music. We will be followed by Toshane Young, parish organizer for National Council for Senior Citizens. A reading from Proverbs 31. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price? A reading from Proverbs 31. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. The word of the Lord. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I'm impelled in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of 
Good afternoon to everyone that is here. Mic check. Good 
afternoon everyone um, to the occupants of the restroom to church family All right. Again, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Sashane Young, and I am here today representing the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. And as the program says, the department is the National Council for Senior Citizens. I am here today to express publicly my sincerest condolences to Alvia and her family at the loss of Wilhelmina Thompson. I keep referring to Alvia because she's the one I know, she's the one I met, she's the one whom I have become friends with doing this job that I do, caring for persons in the parish that are senior citizens. For those of you who are here and you might not know, a senior citizen is anybody that is 60 years and older and Mrs. Thompson was well past the mark of 60. She lived all of 103 years and for the government and um, in the world, somebody that lives to be 100 is recognized as a centenarian. Now I met Mrs. Thompson on her birthday celebration when she became 100. I remember I was called, you know, sent an email from the Governor General that um, the ministry should repre um, be represented at the celebration. Um, I was late, and for those of you who, well, obviously, you wouldn't know, I hate being late. Anyways, I was late to the function, and I was outside, I was so nervous, and I was trying to figure out you know, if I had on the right attire, you know, how was I going to make my presentation, whatever. And I remember two of Alvia's family members came outside and they welcomed me. And I went inside, you know, felt at ease. And I did what I was supposed to do in presenting her a basket, welcoming her to 100 and representing the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. I have for the time that I have known Mrs. Thompson, I have tried to visit when I could and work with Alvia to give to her whatever it was that the government would have had to give to her as a person who would have reached the mark of 100. I am honored to be here today. I check. Okay. Somebody might be wondering how can you be honored to be at the funeral service for someone. But for those in the hearing of my voice, I am honored to be here today because I am not here at the funeral service for a criminal. I am not here at the funeral service for a violence producer. I am not here at the funeral service for anyone less than somebody who has made
I am here, here for someone who has made an indelible mark on her family, the community, I believe, and the world at large because the fact that she has so many persons turning up today to celebrate her life is proof and testament to the kind of person she was. Hearing? I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. It means I'll have to cut my tribute short, but I just want to say again to the family, um, heartfelt, deepest, and sincerest, sincerest condolences. I have not lost someone right now, but I know what it is like to lose someone who you love, who lives right where you are. So I grieve with you, I mourn with you, and I just want to say to you that you should grieve and mourn the hope that she has lived a long, beautiful life and the fact that so many persons have turned up today to celebrate with you. I hope that you will take solace, peace and comfort in that and once again, on behalf of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security and in particular the National Council for Senior Citizens, I once again express deepest and sincere condolences. Thank you so much. Invite Derek Wallace, family friend, followed by Mrs. Esminda Day's daughter and company. Mic check, two or three. My work a lot better because most of us are heard nothing. Yeah. And the, the dear lady that just finished this, you know who she is because it, it was so bad. However, bear with me. Lord, who shall abide in my tabernacle? In thy tabernacle, who shall dwell in the old hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his, in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. In whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he that honoreth them that fear the Lord, he that sweareth to his own, My. to his own earth, and changeth not, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent, he that doeth these things shall never be moved. These few words are from Psalm 15, verse 1 to 5. It sum up the life of Sister T or Sister T Thompson. The Wallaces, which is my parents, and the Thompsons become neighbors sometime between 1942 Five, and 1943. Ten, ten, Their children have grown up. So is my. So is the Wallaces. I am the firstborn of Clovis and Blaselma Wallace. My mom is right this moment sitting on the veranda, wishing she could be here, but she's here in spirit. As their children multiply and travel abroad, 
their offspring multiply, we travel, but a loving contact was almost always maintained. Many from both sides, many both sides have passed on unto their rest, and is no, it is now Sister T time turn. God has blessed her with a long life. As we already already knew that she's a hundred and three. My mother, Sister Wallace, is still with us. She's 97. These two family maintain a loving relationship relation to this day. 80 years later and counting is still and is still my it is still my desire to continue to continue until my my turn come. We do not know how much time we are on this land, but we do know that a hand will come. Sister T, sleep on. I will see you in the morning. God bless you all. Greetings, everyone, to my family and friends. I am here with deepest joy to sing for my mother. But before I do, I just feel led to say two words about my mom. I remember in 2020, I came to visit with my mom, and I spent two months with her. And in the midst of night, I would hear my mom wake, and she's praying to her God, asking the Lord to take her home. My mom has lived a life that has taught me personally what it is to be strong in the Lord, and how to trust in God, and to be a strong person in times of trouble. And I've seen my mother lived. There are times we have funeral, and there are things that said about the person that is gone. It just made us story. But I stand here tonight, today, and what I say, I know it is real facts about the life of my mom. My, to my brothers and sisters, let us not be grieved. Because God has granted my mom the desires of her heart. And there's nothing that is more precious in the sight of God than the death of his saint. I sing with precious joy in my heart for my mom. Many times in my childhood when we travel so far by nightfall or oh, weary I roam Father's arm would slip around me so gently he said my child I am going home to hold me here well I caught a glimpse of the heavenly land praise God I am called in home now the twilight 
a glimpse of what heaven's lands like we are going home there's nothing here to hold you back despite the situation we can serve our Lord praise the Lord at this time at this time we'll have in our midst Miss Carleen Benjamin counselor of Palmer's Cross Division at this time, she will make her way to give her tribute. Praise the Lord, Church. Praise the Lord, Church. God is indeed a good God and he said that in everything we must give thanks to the officiating ministers family of mother T congregation all good afternoon sometimes I feel that we are selfish and this morning I was talking to God and I said God are we really selfish because when we lose a loved one it brings so much tears heartache and we never ever get accustomed to losing someone even though we know that death is sure it is an appointment we still, when we have our family, even when the person is 103 years old, we still would want the person to be around. I would love Mother T to be around today. She's such a loving soul. She is genuine. And she doesn't put up, she's just real. I met her in 2016, close. And I had a brief conversation with her. And I remember she said to me, Mrs. Benjamin, one thing I'm glad about is that you're a Christian. So you will not go about promising people anything. So do not promise anybody anything. And everything that you're doing, please to put God first. And that was my theme 
throughout my campaign. And every time I would visit her, I would remind her of those words of wisdom that she gave to me and I took her advice and I'm better off today for what she taught me. The, the Bible in Proverbs spoke about a virtuous woman. And sometimes when we read these Bible stories, we tend to look for the characters only in the Bible. But I can say to you all today, as you all have already known, that she was indeed a virtuous woman. And my definition of virtuous woman is that she takes care of her family, makes sure everything is intact, and she loves the Lord. Every time I visit, she has something to tell me about the Lord. I really missed her. I was at her 100th birthday. And I said, I don't know what to bring because I'm not good at buying gifts. So I did not know what to buy. So I took the cash with me in an envelope and I said to his granddaughter, I didn't buy anything, you know, but I bring the money. And I know she loves her little money, you know. She loves her money. She's a very independent woman and she loves her money. And she was a very honest lady. I understand that she was a partner lady. So you will all, and I said to somebody the other day, I have been in partners all that in my life and I never get a draw. <laughs> never get a draw. It was most recently in last year that the partner done, I still don't get me draw, and the partner start back, I may not get me draw, and the banker dead, I may don't get me draw. That is not my, my mother tea, right? When you bank, you're going to get your draw. So she was a very honest lady. And today I just want to say to the family, do not weep as those who have no hope. For there is hope in Jesus. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I see my good friend crying because she lost her mommy, but I just want to say to her, don't cry as if you have no hope. I'm happy that I'm at this funeral service. You know why? Because she's not dead. She's sleeping. Because the words of God says, those who die in the Lord, they sleep. Amen. And she had made her calling and election sure. So today she's sleeping in the arms of Jesus. So I just want to tell you, family members, friends all, do not weep for her because she's gone and she's in the arms of Jesus. We missed her dearly. Jesus loved her best. And he has eased her from her pain. And today, God be the glory for Mother T. She has touched many lives in Chateau. She has touched my life in a way that I can't even explain. But I say today, to God be the glory, the day I met her, I am better off today than I was before I met her. My deepest condolence to you all, and just cheer up my brother, because we'll understand it all by and by. Weeping endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And does Jesus care? Oh, yes, he cares. And I'm saying to you all, just don't lean on your own understanding, but in everything today, just trust God, because he's going to take you through. This too will certainly pass with his help. God bless you, I love you all, and stay strong in the Lord. Amen. With us up here, we have Pastor Vestal Vital Barnett. Vital Barnett, right. She is, a church, she is a pastor of the Church of God of Prophecy in Morgan's Falls. 
Chapleton. Right. We are very privileged to have her here. And at this time, she will give her selection. And after she has done so, then we will have Mrs. Ateja and Sheena Thompson, company granddaughters. Okay? Good afternoon, everyone. I stand here this afternoon to bring tributes from the Morgan Spass and Chapleton Church of God of Prophecy. On behalf of Brother Craig, I know all of us know him as Brother Craig, one of the grandson of my dear friend and mama who is lying in the casket. And I want to say to the rest of the family, God understand and he knows all about it. Brother Craig, just continue to be strong. We are praying for you. I'm kind of homesick. Hallelujah. For a country to which I Just a few, just a few more days. 
Jesus. Beautiful. I hear Mama talk to Sarah. Beautiful. She said, my church brethren, my children, my family, my community, beautiful. Sweet beautiful. I'm a reset. Right. Our mama, our matriarch, one of the purest hearts I know, the epitome of love and kindness. She gave of herself so freely. Nothing was too good for her to offer. Boundless her love was for anyone she encountered. Graciously, she pulled her money back from her bosom and gave. She truly understood the definition of serving, her purpose of being the true example of the agape love. Some of the most memorable moments with Mama was her leading worship and prayer uh, with us. Her action was out of this world when she approached prayer. It's not a call to prayer saying, let's pray. She just prayed. This was her showing us and teaching us the value of being in relationship with the Lord. Her cry to the Lord was always, Lord, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Guide me, O great Jehovah, followed by her covering us. Outside of her words in worship and prayer, it's always, where is Shauna and Shari? Or, so when is much coming? Or, where are the children? Mama was a lady of many layers. Many may have missed this, but she was truly a fashionista. Her taste of style and grace was so classic. Mama was our defender in so many ways. She would always stand up for us, especially when it was beaten time. Funny thing is, whenever we misbehave in her presence, her line was, go get the switch. I even remember at one point her having a fan belt band for the switch. Interestingly, I can't ever remember her using it. The only time I could think of that involved a near beating was my brother John C. misbehaving, then decided to run under one of the beds. After hearing, go get the switch, and Mama used the stick of a broom to get him from under the bed. Mama's sense of humor was something else. Watching her in that video mimicking the song, Where Did My Teeth Go, was one of her many comedic moments. Another one of her infamous moments was my sister Paula asking, so mama, your birthday is on Saturday. What you want for your birthday? And her response was, money. <laughs> mama, was truly an, an, <laughs> mama was truly an icon. Witnessing moments when she called out, come Joel, and her along with Joel would sing. She prayed, Joel prayed, and Joel would be the preacher. Mama's worship services were from as far back. This was also one of the things many of her older grandchildren and so many others have always shared. 
One of the first prayers she taught, she thought us was, taught us was, gentle Jesus, meek and mild. If you slept in Mama's house, you know this because you're not going to sleep before praying this as a little child. These were some of the most beautiful moments she poured in each of us in ways only she could have. Mama was always there for us, especially when it counted the most. I am certain we each have experienced this through her unwavering support in our lives. She was quite strong-willed. One of the stories she always shared was of her father being a Jew and was not the most pleasant, but she set out to instead choose a different path to be, the true to be a true example of God's love. Mama's story time were always fun. Some of the most memorable stories she shared included how a Chinese man loved her and she would often joke, oh, uno could have been Chinese, but her choice was the handsome black Cuban man who was our grandfather. She shared stories of him speaking Spanish and oh, how he loved her and was an amazing husband and father. Another one of the fun stories was her sharing about back when she was a party lady. She kept dance and brought big sound and shuttles. One of the best stories she shared was of her showing integrity. She went to Kingston to sell coal along with her daughters and there was a robbery. And the robbers were running away from the police and threw the money in her basket. She then went in and turned the money into the police. Mama was a woman of great character. She was an amazing hostess and enjoyed having people around. She always shared this saying, people keep people. Nothing she looked forward to than visit and time spent with her loved ones. She prepared effortlessly for her loved one's arrival. You named it, she bought it and got it prepared. One of the best parts of her was truly loving to see others happy. Though she has passed on, her memories, her sacrifices will always be with us. So today, I challenge every one of us, let us love God the way she did. Let us give the way she did. Let us be here for each other the way she was. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Truly, it's an honor for me to be here to pay tribute on behalf of the family. I haven't met Mama in person, but I met her through Alvia. Alvia is my friend and co-worker, and she, throughout the years, she has spoke so passionately about her grandmother. And seeing you all here this evening, I know that she was well-loved, and she was one who shared her love. Also, just want to share that I know that you all want to see her someday, and the song that I'm going to be singing is a reflection of that. And my goodly pastor would have just sung about Beulah Land, but let me just remind somebody today that if you want to see your grandmother, your mother, your auntie, your sister, your great, great, great grandmother, if you really want to be in that Beulah Land today, you must be in that first resurrection. If you're not in that first resurrection, it will be a sad day. So let me implore everyone that is here in the hearing of my voice, do what is right because mama has done her part. It is up to you whether you will want to do your part to see her in that great Beulah land. A country where no twilight Shadows deepen on ending days where light will never be. A city where no storm clouds ever gather. For this is just what heaven means to me can i sing that part one more time a country where no twilight shadows depend on ending days 
where clouds will never be. A city where no storm clouds ever gather. For this is just what heaven means to me. Shall we praise the Lord? Lord. Give them a bigger amen. Yeah. This is what heavens mean to me. Wonderful. All right. On behalf of Pastor, the officers and members of the Chateau Seventh day Adventist Church. We want to express our sincere condolence to the family members. We, we want you to know that you are in our hearts. Amen? We continue to pray for you during this time. As we celebrate the life of a wonderful woman, a woman who have done well. Amen. She have done great. And certainly, this kind of service is very unusual here. For a, person's, for a person who have passed over a hundred. Mostly young people. Right? But I mean, her long life tells a lot, right? It certainly tells us that God has been faithful. Because God in his words promises us that, listen, if we are obedient to his words, then certainly he will bless us. And that includes long life. Amen. As it is said here on the program, Mama T, your mother, 
Not just a mother, but a grandmother. Not just a grandmother, but a great grandmother. Not just a great grandmother, but a great, great grandmother. Not just a great, great grandmother, but a great, great, great grandmother. A friend, sister, and daughter. Amen. You know, I, I am very young. Right? If Mama T was here, she would say that young boy, um, breast milk is still on your mouth. Right? So I don't have much to say about her, but I just share, you know, my few experience with her. I recall as a young boy coming to church, she, she, she used to visit church, right? And I can indeed recall when Mama T smiles at you. It was just something. She have an unusual smile. If you, if you had a bad day, or you, you, you were depressed, and when Mama T smiles at you, it changed things. Amen. So it tells you that she wasn't just any ordinary woman, because the blessings of the Lord was upon her. And certainly, from my experience, she loves her family, and she loves to be around her family, right? And it is so, it was a wonderful experience when we would visit her, and especially like Elder Lynn would say, Mama, you know who this? And she said, of course, Clive, right? So it tells you that, listen, while she was at that age, her brain was functioning well. Amen? It is quite rare you would find persons of that age and their brains are sharp, clicking. So Mama T was exceptional. She did well and God indeed blessed her abundantly. But I say to you family members that listen, as it was said earlier that she is only sleeping. And uh, as she would have set the example that we should serve the Lord. It is for you to understand that if you would want to see her, if you would want to be with her, then you must walk that same path. Amen? She has set the example, a great one. And we just want to encourage you that Mama T is sleeping, awaiting that call in the first resurrection. Because God tells us that those who have died in Christ will rise first. Be encouraged, be joyful, be hopeful, knowing that your loved one has done well, not only in this life, but the life to come. God bless you. Amen, church. Amen, indeed. It was well said. We have no, uh, we're going down, Virgin. We have no a musical tribute from Miss Marvelet Simit, grandniece. And then we'll have Ella Lynn, followed by Mrs. Brittany Hall. We take them in this form.
Good afternoon, everyone. Tempted and tried, we of to main wonder. What must this be?
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I interrupted the program, so please bear with me. Two minutes. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. Praise the Lord. So we thank everyone for your item so far, touching our hearts as one of the grand. I just feel like say a word, even a short one. You know, so please bear with me. Mama, as is affectionately called, I believe was a beautiful soul. You know? We all believe she was a beautiful soul. You're not hearing me? You're not hearing? No? I believe Mama was a beautiful soul. Oh, you want to hear it better? I believe Mama was a beautiful soul. That's right. She lived a long time and so while we are mourning we are rejoicing could there be something to regret about for a hundred and three years tell me talk to me could there be something to regret about the only regret would have been if she was like some people who are out there killing stealing and doing evil things but grandma was of a better view the value of life was precious to her she was a woman with a golden heart she wasn't lazy I knew her working very hard. She would go to Kingston and she would do her selling. And every time she returned, she would have things for pretty much everybody in the household on the next side, over the front yard, around the back house, all around. And if there's, there are visitors, she would have things for them also. Listen, Mama, catalog is not empty. It is not vain. It is full with value. I hear John said, Beloved, let's love one another. For love is of God. And he that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. Mama must have known God. Because her catalog is repleted with love. It is not only beautiful, it is electrifying because everyone who would have associated with grandma would have caught the spirit of giving. Grandma's heritage very rich very rich even though she she was not wealthy she didn't have it as we would say like that but she believed in the value that 
a little with God is much. And so, grandma would have given almost to her giving her heart. There could have been no one around. It doesn't matter where you come from. Whether you were prime minister or the governor general, or you were the head of another state, if you come by grandmama, mama, you will have to take something from her. And so the legacy of grandma is reaching beyond the bones of Chateau. It is far beyond the bones of Clarindon or St. Elizabeth from which she came. The legacy of grandma is as Jesus would have said, the man who listened to his word would have been like the man who built his house upon a rock. Because there's no star that can wipe away grandma's legacy. It is deeply rooted and it is finding even sweeter soil and water is flowing so you know it will continue to grow grandma was special and she's still special She has touched my life. I'm sure she has touched all of our lives and the community. And I want to say that she has been she was one, the earliest person to tell me about the Sabbath. Even though I disregarded it. But she was the first to really tell me by words about the Sabbath. And so I am happy that she has made her commitment to follow the principle of God. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what we are, who we are, where we are from. It doesn't matter the accolades. It doesn't matter the degrees. It doesn't matter the beauty. It doesn't matter the strength. Because the only, the only value in life is to obey the words of God. So it doesn't matter. I can come here and talk and talk like no angels could speak without following the principle of God, the word of God, the thus said the Lord. We are nothing at all. And grandma took that stand. I, I can't even remember the year. I was trying to check with my cousin Marlene. Because she was the second to follow grandma. Or the first to follow grandma. And she was of another church. But then she recognized that the Sabbath was the truth. And so she walked into the Sabbath with grandma. I'm saying I'm happy while I'm mourning. I'm happy because grandma recognized that the value of life is really in the word of God. And so I'm, I'm, I'm still rejoicing, although I'm crying. I'm rejoicing. So grandma has done excellent. Grandma has done wonderfully. 
Grandma has done as much as she could with the life that God gave her, the strength that God gave her. And today, I am thankful. I am thankful that she has left not just hardworking principle, not just loving principle, not just beauty, because even to the day of her death, she was still beautiful. She was such a beautiful girl. I can understand why the Mr. Thompson would have taken her from St. Elizabeth. Just a beautiful girl. But above all of that, grandma, grandma sealed, sealed her hope. And I think, I think many times that grandma, while she would have been on her bed, her mind would have been so settled, would have been so settled I'm losing my eye. And she would have been thinking, even if she was here today, she would be saying, I'm thinking today of a beautiful land. I shall reach when the sun goeth down. When through wonderful grace by my Savior I stand, will there be any star in my crown? In the strength of the Lord, I will labor and pray. He said, let me watch as a winner of souls, that bright stars may be mine in that glorious day when his praise like the sea billows roll. Oh, what joy will it be when his face I behold, living gems at his feet, Jesus' feet to lay down. It would sweeten my bliss in the city of gold should there be stars in my crowd. Will there be any star? Any star in my crown when I peep when the sun goes down when I wake with the blessed in the mansions of red will there be To change, change that. I'm gonna change that last, just the last one and sing it again. Will there be any star, any star? Giant grandma and secure our stars. Everybody this evening, join grandma and secure our stars because there will be no starless crown in my father's kingdom. God bless you.
Good afternoon, everyone. To the officiating ministers and members of the congregation, a pleasant good afternoon to you all. Today, today my niece and I stand here to read the eulogy for our grandmother and uh, great-grandmother, Wilhelmina Thompson. On behalf of the family, I would like to take this opportunity to apologize for the technical difficulties earlier. But one thing I want to say to you all is that what the devil meant for bad today, it turned out good. Wilhelmina Thompson. September 25, 1918 to February 7, 2022. Wilhelmina Thompson, whose given name was Wilhelmina Sims, otherwise known as Mother T, Aunt Willel, and Mama, had a timeline spanning over 103 years from September 25th 1918 to February 7th, 2022. Willow was both glamorous and stunningly beautiful, which made her suitor the envy of many. She won many hearts with her vivacious and captivating smile and drew audience whenever she entered a room. To borrow from her compelling words, when asked about being successful in life, she would retort, is a dutiful wife and take exceptional care of your husband, children, and family. With this premise, Willow established herself as the matriarchally leader of her family. Born and raised in the district of Barbary Hall in the parish of St. Elizabeth, to father Arthur Sims, a Jewish descendant of Germany, and mother Ethel Lawson, a second tier descendant of India. She attended elementary school in Barbary Hall. At the tender age of 16 years, smitten by the Cupid arrow of Samuel Obadiah Thompson, who, upon arriving from Cuba, set eyes on her at, a Barbary Hall, at Barbary Hall, and later married her, even with the dissenting voice of her father, Arthur. Willa was the eldest of three daughters for the, her father, and youngest of two for her mother, Ethel. Willow migrated to Magoti in the same parish and wedded husband of Adiah. The union produced seven children, Hortons, deceased, Marjorie, Anita, Leslie, deceased, Esminda, Siebert, and George, otherwise known as Jerry. Hortons and Marjorie were born at Magoti in St. Elizabeth. She never returned to Barbary Hall to the day she passed, but kept abreast of everything that went on with her siblings and family there. Her family members visited her wherever she lived. She participated in all major events in the lives of her siblings and extended family without her physical visitations, but through her benevolence, touched all of their lives. Willow could always depend on her nephew, Phil, AKA Gabby, to journey to Barbary in St. Elizabeth or to Montego Bay to garner important information about her siblings or her maternal aunt Mary or aunt Lillian. She communicated with them, uh, she communicated with them via the post offices by letters and telegrams. Newborns within the family was brought to see Willow shortly 
after birth, and she remembered all of them by name and inquired about them from then onwards. Willow migrated to Shadow District when Hortons was three years and Marjorie was two years. Chateau remained her principal place of abode until her passing. Five more offsprings were added to her family until her versatile and industrious husband departed this life at the tender age of 58 years, leaving her to care for the three younger children. Willow was not daunted by the challenges, but rose to the task and managed the family. Many suitors sought out this breathtakingly beautiful, confident, and committed, unique woman. It took another Thompson of a man, quite an affluent, large landowner, sugarcane, and livestock farmer to gain her hand in marriage. Of course, Mother T would settle for nothing less but the best. Who could happily take care of her young children and first grandson, Alvin. We look back on every new experience, each life lesson, all the fun times, and remember, and remember it like it was yesterday. The qualities possessed are perhaps some of the attributes that the world requires now to be a better place. Good afternoon, everyone. Mama was a godly mother who could best be described as by Charles Sperger quote, mothers, the godly training of your offspring is your first and most pressing duty. Mama woke up at 4 a.m. daily and instantly prayed to God. Her prayers continue over the years and continue up until the time of her death. I remember Mama taught us how to be proper. She insisted on the highest manners to each other and to all big people. Every night we pride ourselves in remembering how good a cook Mama was. The gungu pea soup prepared in the three feet iron pot with at least three quarters of gungu cooked over wood fire Mama would share dinner for her family and her extended family, spreading over three properties, Old Mary Jane and Miss Margaret down the road. If that was not enough, Mama would stand at the gate and wait until she see others to invite them to join her at her house and have some of her signature gungo pea soup. Mama was the last one to eat. She would be sure to feed any visitor her portion of meal and then eat crackers and drink tea before going to her bed. Her kindness was measureless. How can her children, grandchildren, etc., forget the night out eat, take out nights when mama arrived from Old Arbor Bay with fish and bammy? We would all gather around the house We would all gather outside the kitchen and feast it on fried fish and bammy with chocolate tea and coffee under the moonlight skies. For those memories, we are forever grateful. And she leaves a hard act for all of us to follow with our own children and our grandchildren. Before going to bed, we had to read our Bible and pray. However, this is who Mama was, which she felt responsible to pass on to all of us. She was a wealth of knowledge in a neuropathic medicine, caring, aims given, money, and food given. She was our second go to person. Whenever we needed help, you could always count on Mama to rescue you from your parents, flogging you helping you run away from home to escape your parents' fury. And I can sure attest to that. Many kids and adults 
had the privilege of being recipient of mama's hospitality and support outside their blissful hard life. For these things, we are ever grateful. It will be a long life challenge for us to show the love and compassion for each other that she demonstrated throughout her life to us and others. Mama, thank you for the exceptional mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother you were. We were honored to have you share our lives with you. We know you would want us to accept, which we cannot change, encouraged to embrace the life we have, and be thankful for every blessing and opportunity we find. In conclusion, I must say, we will continue to try and walk in the integrity of your love, your grace, your kindness, your dedication that you have demonstrated over the years. Mama, you did it. Today, we celebrate your life and a legacy as you would expect us to. You did well, and I know when you get there, God will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you very much. It's now time to feed on the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we have our pastor here with us, Pastor Javian Huck. He pastors the Palmer's Cross District of Churches, which comprises of Freetown, Palmer's Cross, Chateau, and Roosevelt. Amen, church? So he is well known in this community. Amen, church. Pastor Houghton is here today with the word of God to the people of God. Amen. So I ask you today to sit back, relax, and let Pastor Houghton tell you what God has been doing in his life and what God has doing, been doing in our lives. So today I ask that you just sit back, get comfortable, as he tells us about the word of God. But before Pastor Houghton comes to us, the Chateau SDA group will bring us a song. Amen.
It is indeed the Christian's hope that someday we will rest on the banks of the promised land. What do you say out there? You know, some funeral services are worship services. And this is one such funeral service. I feel like I am at a regular church service today giving god thanks and praise for the blessed hope that we have in jesus christ that though today we are laying to rest the remains of sister thompson we are doing so with great anticipation for that great getting up morning what do you say and so i want to join with all who have shared in tributes and in songs and you know by the way let me just say minister i'm going to recruit you from my church choir <laughs> I, I hope i hope those i hope those members who came with you don't feel anyway but i want to take you away i haven't heard that song done so well in a long time Beulah land Beulah land sweet Beulah land amen amen, amen brethren amen. it's like it's, it's at services like these i hear the best singing for some reason it seems funerals have the best singers elder best singers and so i was encouraged even as i listened to all those who came before with their tributes and their songs and so on and i want to also join in sharing deepest condolence and sympathies to the bereaved family from our church family and whenever we have to lay to rest a member of our church we all share in that mutual sorrow we have been having a series of funerals last week it was sister spencer my first elder's mom right here he week before last and this week we are here again sister thompson one of our elders grandmother elder lynn and he spoke from the heart as to how grandma would have impacted on his life and of course others members of the church friends and family alike who are here this afternoon to to grieve and to show our support to those who grieve and next week sunday am i right it's sister lennox another of our shutting members who passed away it is a reality of life friends we are subject to death the bible says it is appointed unto man once to die but after death comes what the judgment so we have two appointments we can't miss one death and two the judgment so we need to prepare for both am i right because none of us know the lease on life sister thompson was blessed to live to 103 years old wow 103 pastor what a blessing you know my grandmother passed when she was 83 and she used to say some stuff to us as youngsters like young bud no no storm and you know all of them old people talk uh, yeah, young but no no hurricane or no no storm. 
which means that these older folks would have come through some storms of life and they have wisdom to share with us and we must learn to look for wisdom in those born before our time so young people never forget the words of wisdom that your grandmother would have shared with you never forget it because these are the days that they um, the wisdom of the older folks is needed you hardly find it anymore but thank god for women of god like sister thompson would have left a valuable legacy to her children you know there's a psalm and i'm going to just read a portion of this psalm or i can read all of it for you which indicates to me that the blessing of god was definitely upon the life of sister thompson psalm 128 hear the word of god blessed is everyone who fears the lord and the word blessed here let me give you another word. blessed or happy is everyone who fears the lord which means that brethren that if you fear god if you honor god then blessing will follow you amen david says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and that is what i'm saying i have seen that this is a true statement from the word of god blessed is everyone who fears the lord who walks in his ways when you eat the labor of your hands you shall be happy and it shall be well with you your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house your children like olive plants all around your table behold thus shall the man be blessed who fears the lord the lord bless you out of zion and may you see the good of jerusalem all the days of your life yes may you see your children's children peace be upon israel what a word it's a blessing from god to see your children's children and not only that children's children's children <laughs> what a blessing you know my my grandfather said something to me the other day he said that the younger people are cut out of different material he is like the morris oxford and them older vehicles you older people know what i'm talking about what the name of the older vehicles that tough and strong can done eh? when you lada well lada kind of new but it's tough for true but all those old mac truck and you know them old time vehicle he was saying that that's the kind of material that we older folks are made from and you younger ones are made like the corolla eh? Aston cambridge is the old one yeah we make like the little corolla them elder uh, honda fiberglass as they crash your mashup so he was reminding us that time is running out on the generations that we are not able to to live as long as they were living i've already begun to pick out gray hairs out of my beard believe it or not my daughter said to me daddy you're getting old look you're going to die and she was <laughs> she was pointing at my gray <laughs> so a few little gray hairs in my beard so i went to the thing with tweezers and i picked them out just in case <laughs> that can't stop it so life life is 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 it's getting harder back into a hundred now wow you think of it and you say only by the grace of god and i will concur with what elder spencer said when we went to visit and to pray with and to sing with sister thompson and to give her communion she was alert and aware 
and she would sing the songs and you know you would recognize that her mind is still intact and that is a blessing from God that is truly a blessing from God I want to share a quick word with you this afternoon from the book of 2 Timothy 2 Timothy chapter 4 and I'm going to read verses 6 to 8 2 Timothy chapter 4 starting at verse 6 the Apostle Paul says for I am now ready I am now what? ready before I read the next line let me ask, are you ready? no answer so quick no answer so quick ready for what? Paul says I am now ready and I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the, the, the time of my departure is at hand the time of my what departure is at hand I have fought a good fight I have finished the race I have kept the faith finally there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge will give to me on that day and not only to me but also to all those who love his appearing this is the word of God let us pray father God in heaven we come this afternoon for a word from your throne above as we contemplate our own mortality and as we seek to gain insight and instructions from your word I pray that you will open our hearts to receive from you make us willing and obedient we pray in Jesus name Amen I am ready one of the perils of the human heart is death anybody in here comfortable with death death is a terror to the human heart and death is so horrible that it, it inflicts pain and sorrow upon the human race that it is devastating to us that's the reality of death and so as you contemplate death most of the time as a defense mechanism we contemplate death outside of ourselves we contemplate death in terms of other people that will die we make ourselves comforted in that at least it is not me sometimes we hear of a situation and, and not out of any bad mind but you would say better you than me i'll be glad i know me but that is how we relate to death until death comes knocking at our door and i want to let you know my brothers and sisters that death is no respecter of persons you could be brown and pretty like sister thompson when she was in her wedding i saw the wedding picture elder at the wedding day that yes you could have looked like miss world when death comes knocking on your door you have to answer you could be the 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 the, 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 the best specimen of human figure you know some people would want to say that they are the hottest thing on two feet 
when death comes knocking at your door you have to answer whether you're rich or you're poor whether you're black or you're white wherever your status in life death is no respecter of persons we have to come full circle one day to the reality that we are mortals and we are subject to death every funeral service reminds me of my mortality because I know that I can be the next one to go. There are so many things that we can be here one moment and then something take us out. So many different ways. I, I, I heard on the news just recently of a family that was washed away. Until now, they still don't find the body of the 12 year old devil, and the devil and his angels fought. So there were two sides the devil and his angels, and who? God and his angels. And as we come into this world, we are faced with a decision to choose sides. We are faced with a decision to choose which side we're going to fight on. The statistics in crime in Jamaica tells us that many have chosen to fight on the side of the devil. It has resulted in mayhem and turmoil. You know, I, I, I think of 1918. Is that the date? 1918. How different it would have been in 1918. My parents tell me that when they were born, just the other day, just over 50 years ago, it was the good old days. And some of you down there will tell me that you were born in the good old days. You were born in the days when children had respect for parents. You were born in the days when people had regard for righteousness. You were born in the days when somebody died at old age killed them. It would have been a shocking thing to hear that somebody walk into a home and just spray down everybody, baby, everybody dead off. In 1918, that wasn't the kind of world. But, but, but time and things have changed to the point where we have come to live in mayhem and madness. Righteousness is seen as something that is strange and sinfulness is seen as something that is acceptable. You have to choose which side you're going to fight on. I am happy that Sister Thompson fought a good fight. She fought on the side of Jesus. Righteousness was her weapon. Are you with me somebody? Love, as Elder mentioned, was her, her way of life. Kindness, gentleness, the principles that she has passed on to the family. That is what matters. She could have lived a different kind of life. You know what I'm taking Anybody know one name Tegerig? You know Tegerig? <laughs> when I was Tegerig, I don't know if I say it right, but that's saw me hear it. Uh, Tegerig, when I was growing up, my mother always told me, if you're going to look a wife, you make sure you don't care no bad breed. No Tegerig, come here. <laughs> and you know how you're going to get a good wife or a good husband if somebody like sister thompson grow are picking it them good am i right it's not gonna happen by chance parents have to set the foundation and pass on a good legacy are you listening to me so if you want to know the kind of family check grandma and grandpa and mommy and daddy and see if they are people with standard and principle you can take away from that family i'm not advertising on behalf of the thompson's family but we just are saying if you find a little single granddaughter she have a good heritage so you better make sure you want to take a rig amen, amen. principles of righteousness 
you Paul chose to fight on the side of God secondly Paul says I, I, I have finished the race let me tell you something now about the race that Paul is speaking of he's not talking about the hundred meter dash because we know the race is not for the swift not a battle for the strong but he that what endures to the end the same shall be saved uh, last week we have sports day Ella. then Virginia said them challenge me him did kind of win ish first because he fall start and beat me in the race and I said run over run over the race <laughs> And we line up again because all of them, you know, all of these guys up here, all these men up here, so they're going to beat past in the race. We line up again, and when we shoot off, you came second. You never in the second one. He'll, he'll drop out. But if it were that kind of race for all of us to be heading out, who first reached the finish line? Dog eat we suffer. Because there are others who would be faster than us. There are others who would be better than us. There are others who would have more spiritual strength than us. But God is not asking who's going to get to the finish line first. It is the same reward. It is the same crown of life. It is the same heaven for every one of us. Once we keep holding on to Jesus, once we keep on pressing on the upward way, we will reap the crown of life that God has promised to all of us. So this is not the 100 meter dash. It is a battle of endurance. It is a race of endurance. And I am happy to know that Sister Thompson did not give up along the way. I am happy that she did not take her eyes off Jesus, but straight to the finish line. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And by the way, if you know about the, the relays, the author is the one who starts. So the starter. And in between, you have persons passing on the baton. Am I right? And then you have the finisher, the one who brings it home. I want to let you know, Jesus didn't allow you to run the race on your own. He started for you and he finished it for you. All you have to do is put your hand in his hand and run with him. And you will surely make it the kingdom of the kingdom of God. And so, my brothers and sisters, God is saying to you, run the race with endurance. Run the race with endurance. And if you're not in the race yet, get in the race, the Christian race. Get in the race, the Christian race. The starting block is where you get baptized. Mark 16, verse 16, he that believe it and is baptized and is what baptized the same shall be saved but he that believe it not shall be condemned or damned so my brothers and sisters you have to do something about salvation accept it receive it demonstrate faith all of us want to see sister thompson again in the sweet by and by am i right and and, and i know that she wants to see all of us in the sweet by and by. What better joy could grandma have than to see her children and grandchildren and great grandchildren in the kingdom of God? What greater joy? Somebody mentioned that she knew all of you by name. Once a little one is born, you bring her or him or her to grandma and introduce that little one. And she remember all of your names. Don't you think that when that great getting up morning comes, her family will be on her mind? Hmm? She will want to know where all of you are. So you, my brothers and sisters, and by extension, friends, let us make our calling and our election sure. Are you with me? Run the race and finally keep the faith. Paul says, I have kept the faith. Hebrews chapter 11 gives us the hall of faith. Many who, has, who have gone on before us, that we would think of them as more soldiers of the cross than we are but there were people just like us the bible says by faith abel offered a more excellent sacrifice 
the names of those who are saved are listed in the scripture right here. Abel. And if we go to verse 6, it's it, it, verse 7, it says, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things yet to come, moved with godly fear. So we have Abel, we have Noah. Then the Bible says, By faith Abraham also obeyed. Are you with me? Let me go down the list. Let me go down the list. And by faith Sarah, Abraham's wife, she herself also received strength to conceive in her, what you call it, old age, after menopause. <laughs> but God had a plan. Are you with me, somebody? That's a different sermon. By faith, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says that, that Jacob and Esau, concerning things to come, they also received the promise. By faith, by faith, Joseph when he was dying, made mention of the departure of his children, Israel, and gave instructions concerning his most. By faith, Moses. And there's a, there's a strange name in here, Samson. If you know anything about Samson, Samson, he, he, he lived a careless life. But at the end, at the end of his life, he was redeemed transformation took place so the list that is here in hebrews 11 it is not exhaustive it's not the complete list by faith we can have let me call him wilhelmina thompson and by the way them name they stop give out wilhelmina you know those names are names for people who are 103 years old am i right anybody know their name wilhelmina so let me talk about not the one a name that came from 1918. When I'm doing baby blessing these days, I have to call the mother and the father and say, what is translated? <laughs> Some new names. <laughs> trouble, give you trouble to call. But anyway, so God is saying that your name also can be written in the book of life. Like all Hebrews 11 have these names written, the Bible says that God has his book in heaven. And one of the books is called the book of life. And if you want your name to be written in the Lamb's book of life, you have to accept the sacrifice of the Lamb. You must be born again. He said to Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see much more he enter the kingdom of God. You have to be born again. It's not a question if, but, or maybe. You must be born again. And Paul says, finally, after all this life is over, after all this, the perils and the troubles of this world, he says, finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Will there be any starless crowns? And you, and you sing this song already, Ella. But there's another song that says, no, not one. Hmm? So if you want that crown of righteousness, you have to accept Jesus. If you want that crown of life, you have to accept Jesus. The Lord will give everyone according as his, as his word shall be, because he is the righteous judge. It is said that in Jamaica, anything you want, you can buy it. One visa, doesn't even know a man. Want passport? You just need to know a man. You want driver's license? Everything by. Am I right? Some people go on some court case. And if they know somebody too, they can buy out them freedom. But let me tell you something. And a link. I don't get to go heaven. I know who you know, I'm going to get you to heaven. If you don't have Jesus, you can't make it. And God is not going to be bribed. He has no favorites. One way to the kingdom for everyone. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So the righteous judge will not do show curry favor. The righteous judge will not give anybody any excuse. One of my professors, when we were in college, we were studying 
biblical languages like Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic and so on. And we went to the class and Dr. York said to us, repeat after me. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea massima culpa. Repeat, let me, let me, I'm not bad you can't say it. Repeat after me, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea massima culpa. What do you think that means? Well, me, like Spanish or English, me, you know, say yourself, you me, my. Mea culpa means it's my fault, like culpa, culpable. Mea culpa, it's my fault. So he says, repeat, it's my fault, it's my fault, it's all my fault. So when he told us to say that, and all of us repeated it, he said, no, none of you can blame me if you fail the course. If you don't work for A, you're going to get F. If you don't do your assignments, you're going to fail. If you don't show up to class, you're going to fail. But once you show up and you put in the effort and do what you must do, you will pass. And at the end of the semester, guess what? Everybody who fail and go to Doc, Doc, how come you give it? Him say, you remember the first one? He say, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea massima culpa. And foreign languages are not easy. Biblical language are dead language, like Hebrew and Greek and some of those languages. The ancient something look like hieroglyphics. Hard. But we had to learn them. But at the end of the day, I am saying to you, your salvation. You may say, it's difficult to be a Christian. It is, it is, it is difficult to serve the Lord and I'm going to have obstacles and trials. And yes, you will. But fight the good fight. Because if you should die and your soul should be lost nobody's fault but yours so my brothers and sisters as we close this part of the service I implore you I encourage you to take a leaf from the book of sister Thompson and if there is anything else that you need to get right in your life do it so do so before it is too late. May God bless you. May God keep you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you. And may he give you his peace. Amen. All right, we now have a prayer for the family. So I ask that the family be seated and the rest of members please stand while I pray. Families, be, please be seated. Bow your heads with me while I pray. O most loving, righteous and eternal Father, we pause one more time to give you thanks for your many blessings in our lives. We thank you for today. We thank you for the life of Sister Thompson, who has been such an influence in the lives of many of us. So we thank you, Father, for her life. We thank you for her family, who she has grown up to be examples in this district. Father, today we pray that you may help them to continue in the unity that they have shown. We pray for strength. We pray today, Father, that you may over over them, despite their feelings today, Father, despite their mourning today, but Father, you know best. You are the balm in Gilead. You can calm any storm. 
Father, today we pray that you may over over them one more time and let them know that you are the comforter and you will comfort their hearts today. Father, we know that healing is a process, but Father, we know that you will guide them throughout the rest of their lives. So Father, we just want to thank you for being the God who you are. And Father, we pray that the family of Sister Thompson may emulate her. We pray that you may continue to be the driving force in their lives today. So that one day soon, if they are not, they are not giving their lives to you, they may do so in short order. Father, again, we thank you for your presence with us. And as we leave to the graveside, Father, we pray that you may continue with us. We pray that you may continue in the remaining part of this service so that it may be done in good order. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being the God who you are. And thank you for protecting us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we now have the closing hymn.
we have come to the end of this part of the service. We'll be transitioning to the graveside at this time. And so, as we prepare to exit, we will lead the way, the officiating ministers, followed by family members who will make an arch of honor using the rose that you have. So then, followed by the casket, pall bearers, and then the rest of the congregation. So let's exit in that orderly fashion, after which we will be heading to the graveside, which is the family plot. So we'll just take this road and go up, all right? So the closing hymn at this time, I'm gonna invite Miss Hart, who has been singing out her heart from this afternoon. <laughs> to come again, doing a very good job. Amen, church? Amen. I'm going to recruit her for the church choir as well. Amen. She passed the audition, not true? Yes. Amen. All right, so we're going to stand for the opening, for the closing song at this time as we prepare to leave. There's no song there. Just sing the same song again.
going to come into the committal service at this time. So we're going to sing the song that is printed. Well, we have two choruses printed. Someday I'll go where Jesus is and my home is in heaven. So we're Father in heaven, we at this time, oh Lord, as we are about to put the rest of the data remains to the ground. We pray, Lord, that you will mark this spot of ground. So when you would have sound the trumpet, she will come forth. But oh God, at this time, we just want to present once more the family members to you. We ask that you will comfort them and we pray that you will give them the joy and the hope and the assurance that if they are faithful, they will see their loved one again. We ask that, that you will just envelop them in your love and in your care. Help them to know that you are God who cares for your children, even though they mourn. So, we present the rest of the proceedings here in your son's return, let me pray until the time. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, cousins, prepare for me to go down there. That's all I'm never telling you. Prepare for me to go down there. All right. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, because the former things have been passed away. For as much as God, in his infinite love and wisdom, and the outworking of his providence, has allowed this, or dear sister, to lay down the burdens of this life, and to fall asleep in Christ, we do tenderly commit her body to the ground by saying earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We do this in full and free assurance that all the issues of life are in the hands of the everlasting God of love and compassion and that he has promised eternal life to those who love him. Amen. All right. Mama, 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 we will tell the story how we overcome. We will. Have 
Oh, I know. 